um, the, the spicy questions, Nick. Yeah. And it's just, I think because we're going into week five and things have just happened and escalate, I mean, it's just talking about the reality yeah. rather than burying it. Do you think Trump did a good job in setting the bar of, of knowing about the global health, uh, restrictions and what he's doing for America. And then my second question is if this happens till November or December, are people okay to rebel a little bit in order to have welfare, um, logic, welfare logic okay. and understanding yeah. uh, that you're separated from family you're separated from gatherings you're separated from uh friendship relationships mm -hmm. um i'm gonna quote william wallace uh one of the oh. guys who resurged uh making the freedom of scotland yeah. from the domain and rule of ireland he says this great movie by the way with mel gibson i've shown that clip a couple times in uh, high school a lot of men die but few men have ever lived yeah that's where i'm going from so there's yeah. two questions right. i know i did a lot trump first then okay. welfare considerations okay has trump done a good job regarding this virus um i would say if you asked me about the past couple days i would say yes the guidelines he put out yesterday are great really you know tangible like okay this is what we're suggesting and i think that makes sense and i think that's really good um overall um, well, I mean, considering that in January he said that the coronavirus was made up and a hoax and fake news, um, I have a hard time saying he did a good job dealing with it. Um, considering that the World Health Organization said on January 3rd that coronavirus is a thing and needs to be paid attention to. Um, and it wasn't until March that it started to be taken seriously. Um, that's two months of wasted time, I think. That's what I think. Yeah. And uh, just knowing that the president of the United States is given a lot more information than we are, you know, you have to take my answer with a grain of salt, but... I just think, you know, doing nothing would have been better than telling people that it was fake. Hmm. That's my opinion. Hey, dude, this is coffee. This is real talks. I appreciate your opinion, man. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah, I, I, and it's not like Trump is like I'm trying to knock Trump or anything, but I'm just looking at the the actions. Yeah, be like this is not the action I would have done. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, and I don't think it's the action that should have been done. There's a there's a board game called uh, Pandemic. I think I've played that once. Yeah. And it was really fun. And it, like, you got to make some good moves. Yeah. Um, and I just think doing nothing and saying it is fake <laughs> news is like saying, oh, this yellow virus over here, we don't need to worry about it. And we're just not going to do anything for like three turns. Yeah. And now it's like kind of a serious problem. It's interesting that, that, I mean, even to the, the compliment of noticing something and not doing something about it, or even to, and I think, you know, understanding like America is a land of the free home of the brave mm -hmm. land of opportunity, a land where dreams come true but we have a lot of immigrants we have a lot of people visiting we have a lot mm -hmm. of plane flights going yeah. in and out 
you would think that, you know, even with China, yeah, like if there's flights, um, regardless if it's a virus, hey, uh, something's going to get infected, especially urban environments, yeah. um, especially the cities, especially yeah. the airports, especially, yeah. um, you know, I watched Planet of the Apes, the, the three movies. I the first one loved them. Yeah, the first, the first part one is at, so good at the end when they showed <laughs> the, virus, the spreading. virus spreading. It is something to consider. Yeah. One thing I do bring to the table, too, is one thing I do respect about Trump. He's calling out China with the Global Health Organization and us investing $4.53 trillion and then not getting the notice from them about things. I'm going to have you follow up and just kind of calling out, hey, Hey guys, like we weren't prepared and an understanding mm -hmm. what's the intentions, what's the motives, is it actually true, is it not? But he's calling out, he's stepping up, he's asking the hard questions. But I do like, and this is something too, and I'm sure we could branch out. We have the infrastructure in America compared to other nations. Like Italy right now, their infrastructure, they, they are torn down because of this and uh, ripped apart, sadly. But with America, as we are getting ripped apart compared to other nations, um, you know, during this time frame, we are okay. We still have jobs. Now, granted, we'll see as this process goes on mm -hmm. and jobs. I just saw some businesses actually in Bakersfield, like, drop out. Like, I don't see them anymore. Their signs are, I'm like wondering what the heck's going on. Oh, no. So, uh, granted... We have the infrastructure right now. We're we have the the minds, the capabilities, but it does have something. I, I like that Trump is able to see some infra. He 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 has that business mentality, which does help with a president who might be more geared to a leadership style of let's save the earth, let's care for the earth, but doesn't know how to handle crisis. Um, and that's why. Regardless of any person, you want to surround yourself with wise counsel. Uh -huh. Because if you're a Lone Ranger in this, watching over, I think in America it's 350 million population wise. I might be wrong. That's it's a lot. Um, you, you better be humble. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. Follow up to that. The infrastructure, uh, the steps forward, longevity. Long, longevity? Steps for longevity? Um, okay, this is what I think. Steps for longevity. And then I'll go to William Wallace. <laughs> uh, steps for longevity, I think, is just being safe and being careful. Um, and I, I've said this before, but I mean, this thing is going to be over once we get a vaccine. And we just don't have one yet. So I, I do want to, I want to come in here real quick. You are listening to a guy um, on the other end of the table right now drinking a delicious, smooth, crisp, uh, refreshing coffee that has actually called out the virus impact when most people, including myself, doubted. So at this point, it actually, and it's not that he's a genius or a mystic or anything like that. He just... Somehow, some way, he's he's seen some impact that could spread before other people could, and so when you're listening to this, I, as I am, if I decide now that I'm wrong, oh my god, <laughs> uh, I I have a grain of sand, uh, knowing like the beach is full, kind of understand. Like I only got one grain of sand, understanding the beach is full. So maybe just listening a little bit better. So continue. Um, rather than just throwing out opinions. I, right, yeah. It's a um, valued opinion. I don't know. I just, I feel like um, this is going to be hard to deal with until we have a vaccine and we know that people can be inoculated against this thing. Um, what was that? That was my child. Um, <laughs> he just cooed. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't worry. Just I, I couldn't tell if that was like a fart. I couldn't tell if... <laughs> If you had like a soundboard for the, da, 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 you know, I honestly couldn't tell. If I farted baby coos, um, yikes! It would be kind of a gift. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I mean, they're really cute. 
But let's not get on that no, tangent. Yeah, let's yeah. finish your... Um, yeah, so I just... Yeah, once you get an antiviral that works, once you get a vaccine that works, I mean, the virus is done. It, it can't do anything. Now, granted, you have to make the antiviral and you have to get that to people and you have to make sure people take it because I'm sure there's going to be ugh, there's going to be anti-vaxxers who are just like, I'm not taking it. I'd probably be one of the one of the guys Ellie hey I'm glad you have me at the table man <laughs> so um, I'm hearing this right now yeah honestly um, and yeah so that's gonna help a lot and there's gonna be people who resist but there's gonna be people who think that water is bad for you hmm. you know hmm. because the government's putting chemicals in the water or something Interesting. there's always the weird conspiracy theorists but no, I think once the vaccine happens, and who knows how long that's going to take to make and get to everybody. Could be next month. It could be next year. Let's, uh, so you just threw that out there. Let's just, not necessarily predictions, but something that I think we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. Just talking about life, you know, these things. Yeah. I hope you guys are talking about it rather than... Uh, building it up inside you know just talking around the table may a good time to maybe start doing that regardless of finding your relationship through t technology and um you know with what you're given just taking time talking about life mm -hmm. what 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 would you think about this going forward what would i in the impact i guess uh the not predictions but just what will be uh with the vaccine with the end of social distancing, um, with schools opening up, with people being able to gather, mm -hmm. um, what are your what are your thoughts? I guess. Um, I think yesterday I said November is like that's what I would say the soonest it would be for mm -hmm. us to get together, and that's not based on anything. No, <laughs> that's just based on a kind of a gut instinct of like if things were to get better. You know, how long would it take for things to kind of get back to normal? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't see it happening sooner than November. Mm -hmm. But to answer your William Wallace question. Yes. Um, so your question is like, do people have like the right to rebel or? It's a hard way of saying not mob or, justice or yeah. like not mob justice or not rebelling against the government but because people are so uh so enclosed uh -huh. to the government order of staying right. inside but after time continues um and you you mentioned yesterday that a scientist said that you know this social distancing thing might last two years but right. you gave some some more insight to that like people will eventually in their nature want to reach each other um, yeah. and not just familiar people within their household, but thinking about welfare compared to the orders of staying safe. And I, I mean, right. and, and kind when of you say that. welfare, you mean like not the government program, not welfare. the, you mean just like people's well being? Yes. Well being. Yeah. Yes. Um, because right. there's, you know, there's that aspect of stay safe we're going to get through this, follow the rules, finish the journey. We know what we're doing, but then after a while, so let's say someone dies uh, in this process horribly, uh -huh. but they never got to live and say goodbye to their family because they were- And that's happened. Social distancing. That's happened a lot. Yeah, a lot. And in hospitals, hey, we have a, you know, we got coronavirus. You can't say goodbye yeah. to your loved one. Yeah. You, uh, you're giving birth. Hey, guess what? Um, you can't be there in the room with, with, or we have to, we can't do that. You have chemo, you have chemo follow up. Yeah. You have cancer. Yeah. Sorry. You're going to have to wait and probably just get through it because we got coronavirus. So mm -hmm. throwing that out, out there, just kind of right. wanted to see what your thoughts are. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a lot. Uh, I think, man, I hope people just stay calm. 
I really hope they do. Um, I could see... Hmm. I mean, there's the possibility of people starting to do s silly stuff if, you know, something starts trending on <laughs> Facebook or Twitter. And like I, eating I... dishwasher soap? Oh like yeah, I mean, if people start eating Tide Pods, yeah, dude, because of some trending thing, guys, please don't. Yeah, it's um, ridiculous. I think what can end up happening. Have you ever read the book Ender's Game? I've heard of it. Yeah, uh, the movie was okay. Uh, the movie didn't talk about some of the background stuff that was happening, mm -hmm. where basically these huge rebellions started happening on Earth because two people were just posting on the internet mm -hmm. and getting people all worked up. Mm -hmm. That's all it took yeah. for these huge rebellions to start. Yeah. So, and I'm not saying like, oh, well, th it happened in this book and it could happen in real life. But I think if people can be like, oh, Tide Pod Challenge, cool. I'll subscribe to that and mm -hmm. I'll eat it. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of makes me wonder like, oh boy, you know, if people did start getting tired of being at home and you know little hashtag stand up hashtag fight the man mm -hmm. um started happening uh, you know it's possible yeah people start to act weird when they're stuck at home it's a it's a hard scenario i mean like even to i mean and i can transparently say this you know i mean danny talked about this i'm curious you know, we have a son, three yeah. month old. If you've been listening through the uh, through the podcast, and he's he's a joy, he's a blessing from heaven. But we've talked, you know, hey, um, we actually have a friend right now who uh, her her mom is dying of COVID. Oh my god! Uh, she has kids. She has a husband, but she cannot say goodbye mm. to her mother. Um, but that decision, though, is in her lap, even though it's protected by the hospital right um you know she has to think about her husband her relationships yeah um beyond her mother uh yet she's lived life with her mother mm -hmm. um and the kids and you know thinking about this danny and i were talking well if one of us had you know covid mm -hmm. um things change because we have a child but if we didn't have a child would i would I risk myself to say goodbye to my wife? Right. Um, and I'm not going to give you the answer on this at all. Uh, <laughs> but I know that sacrificially, selflessly, and wholeheartedly, I've given myself away to my wife. Um, uh -huh. uh, if my child wasn't in the world, uh, but he is. And uh, some, some tough decisions, some very tough decisions. Mm -hmm. And also to... Um, protection policies that do and or and are in place by god for the people that right. that's what we have to hope in but at the same time too like william wallace a lot of men die but few men have ever lived and just mm -hmm. kind of understanding that and yeah hearing what you're saying nick too um i don't know it's just uh, yeah. just talking yeah. about it with a brew with you this morning. Yeah, man. it's just hard. Um, I think, because I have a friend on the East Coast that I was sending some messages to on Instagram. Just She she was actually asking about the podcast, and uh, I'm like, oh, here, come check it out. Uh, we met at camp uh, on the East Coast, and, uh, man, she has friends who um, whose family members have died from this. And mm. it's heartbreaking. And so it's real. And I don't know. I think the reality of this thing, I don't think it's hit Kern County as hard. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. Um, you know, we have 500 cases here. Three people have died. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm sure the families of those three people are just like, what the heck? How did this happen? Mm -hmm. But, you know, 
people for the most part like they're, they're like people are having parties yeah that's ridiculous like huge coronavirus parties yeah. <sighs> like there was one last week here in town of like 400 people are you and, serious yeah and it's just like what are you doing mm. and so i don't think people are taking it seriously and i think it's going to take more people getting sick for people to be like oh shoot yeah and i think when that happens people are okay with like all right i think maybe we need to stay home yeah 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 i i totally agree this is not a, f a fun thing no um i you know there's god uses this in such a way that only only god in heaven knows um right. but to party at the beach um to host a bunch of parties and like and it possibly yeah. infects i mean with sweat and touch i mean it's uh you really i think it my question that pops in my head is like what is your value of life even um and then what's your what's your value of even understanding death yeah um, and i think taking time for that even, yeah to let that sink and i think that's where you're going to see the rebellion is on the front end once the death and the pain starts coming, people are going to be like, oh, okay, maybe the government telling me to stay home was actually a good move. Yeah. Or choosing an enemy, though you've made that choice. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it's the government's fault. And then just like oh, lashing yeah. out on yeah. tons of different people around you <laughs> or even a, a source where decisions were made and mm -hmm. and also too just anger right. rage pain yeah sadness grief lamenting that's why the psalms are made uh-huh you know um what's the source of turning your lament to right um and i think you know that's just never helpful to blame somebody all the time and i think that's some people's um tendency to when something bad happens like you have to ask the question like who's to blame that's what they do who's to blame for this and a lot of the times you know there are people to blame like if i slap you across the face who's the blame well it's uh, me i would say you it's me yeah um if if i had to ask answer that question i slap you across the face who's the blame oh dude it's my it was my childhood made me the way that i am Dude, that's a and so notice that I'm like wow. I'm like diverting the blame really easily. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think with big stuff like this, people Good are gonna point. be like, oh, it's you know, you know, it's it's Trump's fault, you know, yeah, for this whole thing. Mm. Or oh, it's the World Health Organization, or oh, it's China, and you know, there's a lot of blame firing. Mm. Um, but you know, sometimes. <sighs> Sometimes there's no one to blame. Like, let's be real. Sometimes there's no one to blame. And just junk happens. That's prolific right there. Um, and I think you get that a lot in Ecclesiastes. Um, where, like, wisdom is vanity. Knowledge is vanity. Mm. And, like, what what's the purpose of wisdom? And I almost feel like... You know, that could be interpreted as I had wisdom. I have an idea of how the world works and things still didn't happen the way I thought they were going to. So who's to blame there? Sometimes the world just doesn't make sense. Actually, if you want blame, there there is something you can blame all the time and it's just sin. Yeah. The, cor the, the corruption that sin brings. Yeah. Sin and the enemy, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, blame. The enemy, Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Now... I think also, too, you shouldn't try to find a demon in every bush. That's a good point, too. Yeah. yeah. Be like, oh, Satan. <laughs> Spilled my milk. Yeah, or if I, if I slap That's Bill, Satan. you yeah. know, like, oh, Satan made me do it. Yeah. It's his fault. Like, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. No, it was me. Yeah. I, I did it. Um, so you just have to find the balance of personal responsibility and just the... Um, weirdness of this world there's a great bible project video do you watch bible project i do i follow them on instagram and uh and i've watched some and i think i actually want to since you brought that up um 
yeah, just get back into some of it since we have some time and yeah. just really get some truth. They have a great visuals. series on wisdom literature. And, uh, you know, breaking down the three wisdom books in the uh, Old Testament, Psalms, uh, Proverbs, not Psalms, uh, uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Job. What in the Song of Solomon? Or no, is that more poetic? That's more poetic. Okay. Um, but yeah, they break down these three books where you know proverbs is like really optimistic where hey you do the right stuff and good stuff is going to happen to you the world makes sense this is how the god made the world to work you know mm -hmm. like work hard you're going to get good stuff mm. you know you you're faithful and you're going to be blessed and then ecclesiastes uh and the way that they represent it is so cool like where proverbs is this like elementary school teacher who's teaching and being like you know here's how the world works and it's really fun and exciting and just do the right stuff and everything's going to be great mm -hmm. and then ecclesiastes is kind of this older uh skeptic who's gone through a lot of life and he's seen that you know you're not wrong but sometimes the world just doesn't work the way you think it's going to mm-hmm uh, there's just like this randomness and there's this chaos where you can do all the right stuff and then things don't work out the way you want them to or you think that they should. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it has to do with this chaos that sin brings. Yeah. Um, and then there's Job where it's like kind of this old man, older, older man who's gone through crazy stuff in his life and he has a you know three thousand foot view of everything mm -hmm. and it's you know you can do everything right chaos can happen but at the end of the day god's in control of everything yeah yeah and it's just an awesome you know three video series hmm. i would well done tag that right there the bible project yeah definitely look into that um it's trusted it's biblical and it's really well researched um mm -hmm. in in sharing about kind of the truths of scripture which are visual audible right. and um easy to, to easy to interpret um i think even too i'm going to tag something else if you're a movie person i'm a movie buff love movies um the song is based off of uh relevant uh relationship with ecclesiastes through the book of ecclesiastes with this relevant relationship between this man and this woman um, and their life and it kind of just uses scripture throughout the movie uh you can get it i think on amazon prime mm. uh, on netflix and it showed me wow uh, it, i almost said wow it showed me wow wow <laughs> it showed wow. me wow because how i read words through ecclesiastes sometimes it doesn't make sense but when it's lived out through people mm. and scripture is shown back and forth and there's a struggle um and then there's this understanding of what is uh, what is there to gain in the world um yeah everything is dust in the wind you know just mm -hmm. ev everything is meaningless and yeah it's just this what is here lived out yeah uh, between this really and it's a really good movie it's pg there's one scene that is uh pretty crazy uh, -oh. uh that i can't share but it's you know i would say watch it as a family 10 uh i would say 12 years old and up 12 years old and up uh, PG worth it. If your kids can handle one scene, it's not anything explicit, but it's something that's real, uh, right. that someone struggles with, with their depression, they make, and they do an act, mm. um, that's really saddening, but it kind of shows the, the, the relationship between humanity, the world, the creator, and, um, and what is meaningful and yeah. what is purposeful. Yeah. Um, so I would even, I mean, shoot, man, you got me on another question right now, but I got to, yeah, you're I doing, got a tinkle. You're, bro. you're doing the dance. I got it. I got a tinkle, but I, I looked at a website, me and my wife were talking, is this the end times? That's one thing I keep getting back and forth. We 
read from five different pastors right now, uh, five, four different pastors and one amazing person that, uh, that basically said, Hey, what does it look like? What does it look like right now to, to see if God is coming back and is he coming back? And what scripture says, Hey, is this one of these epidemics that is prophesied to be fulfilled in the coming back of Jesus Christ? And let that sit like Jesus Christ is coming back. He is coming back. If you've never thought about that, um, I want you to really think about that. Um, regardless of whatever religion, uh, there's a reality that there's an end and then there's a fulfilling and then there is a consummation. But Jesus Christ is coming back in a way that is totally different from every other religion where he actually is coming in power and glory and splitting the clouds in fire and in an immense light of heaven mm -hmm. to restore the world back to its original place. And we talked about the garden uh, to a new earth. But these five pastors, um, four pastors in this important, important person, one was uh, David Jeremiah, John Piper, Anne Graham Lotz, which is Billy Graham's daughter. Oh. Um, and then there's uh, Michael Brown, who's Pentecostal. And then another guy, Jimmy... Jimmy something from Gateway Church in Texas. And they all, and that that's Pentecostal as well, or charismatic. And they all said something. I do want to land specifically uh, on all of them. But I think the one I'm just going to call out because I believe at least where I'm at, and I'll let Nick share after, is John Piper. And not, favorite, not having a favoritism view, but more so just kind of understanding from the universal church and kind of what that looks like. Uh, John Piper really quoted, I think it was in Luke nine or 11, that there are many in the world right now, Christian and non-believer where God is calling the world to repent, mm -hmm. to repent because we really have gone astray from worshiping, following and desiring the true triune God, mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he said, because of the end time prophecies, uh, this is not a finality kind of prophecy. This is something that is just happening. Is it a buildup? He doesn't go into that, but he basically said, I believe God is calling us and basing it off G Jesus giving a parable about a tower falling on I think, some people and said, are those people more faithful than those that are faithful? No, by all means, mm -hmm. Jesus is calling us to repent. I don't think that was a parable. That was like an actual thing. It was an actual thing? Yeah. Oh, dang. Um, bam, quoted. So um, kind of where I'm at, and even in my own walk, I'm seeing a Psalm 46 where he stilled the world. Mm -hmm. and things seem crashing down, but really there is a... There is a calling to God being sufficient and redirecting our gaze uh, to holiness. Uh -huh. uh, in a world of distraction, voices, passions, worldly passions, uh, maybe some idols. Idols don't have to be made, carved, decorated, heart, mm -hmm. affections. Mm -hmm. And God is good enough to still us in this. So where I'm at. Nick, what are your what are your thoughts on end times? Yeah, I mean, just, and I know you haven't looked at the article. Right. I guess I can send it to you. Yeah. But I mean, just um, maybe we don't even have to talk about it. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so here's what I think. Um, I think it's really easy to look at something bad that happens, and just think, oh my gosh, this is the end. This is the end. Um, it's over, uh, you know, the, the end is coming. And I think it's really easy to get into that hopelessness or that despair. But uh, what I think is that when the end comes, you know, when you ask the question, is this the end of the world? Uh, I think the question 
or I, I think when you ask that question, you know, if you have to ask that question, let me put it that way. If you have to ask that question, is this the end of the world? I would say it's not. I would say it's not. Um, yeah, I would just say it's not. And instead I would say when the end does come and when Jesus truly does come back, man, you're going to know. It's going to be obvious to everybody. It's not, I don't think there's going to be a situ. It's going to be a situation like, oh, is that, is that Jesus? Is, is he here? Uh, you're going to know. Everybody's going to know. Uh, and, and that's pretty clear in Revelation. So, yeah, just to answer that question, is this the end times now? I don't think so. Um, Jesus specifically says you're going to hear, uh, there's going to be wars and there's going to be rumors of wars um, when, you know, towards the end, you know, but this, these are all, these are all birth pains, you know, these are all, you know, things that are uh, kind of leading up to the big event, but not quite yet. And I, I like the picture of you know, a woman who's pregnant and, you know, she, she feels kicking and she maybe feels some discomfort, um, maybe some labor pains even, but not quite yet. And it's easy to be like, oh my gosh, this is it. I felt a kick, you know, it's coming. And it's like, well, no, not yet. Uh, but it's signs of things to come. So I don't know. I'm of the opinion that things are going to get a lot more they're, they're going to get worse, just kind of overall, and maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not even the next hundred years. But uh, when Jesus comes, when Jesus comes, you're going to know. It's not going to be a question when he comes. And I think the people who have tried to predict it, you know, they've been proven wrong time and time again. Uh, so yeah, there's just not really a point, I think, in trying to figure out if it's the end of the world or not, because when it happens, you're going to know. It's not going to be a question. Definitely, man. I think, uh, I appreciate what you just said right now. Um, you know, and I bring this up just a personal end to this. I mean, I was in the, I was in the community backyard of the apartment complex our bulldog, English bulldog, our fat chunky boy taking a, a potty break, going poop and pee. All of a sudden, um, got a text message from a just a good friend and trusted mentor. And he's like, hey, Jesus is coming back. And I'm like, okay, like that would be sweet. You know, sometimes my grandma and grandpa think that and they're faithful, but they thought Jesus would come back like 2000. <laughs> and, uh, you know, didn't take it for Y2K granted. Y2K or Y2J? what does that even mean uh year 2000 jesus i love that so much dude i want, <laughs> I want to get a tattoo on the side of my heart they could do that yeah yeah anyway anyways um, anyways <laughs> we uh we uh you know i didn't take him seriously all of a sudden he kind of was just like uh, on text message just yeah man just fall be ready mm -hmm. and oh, um wow. i don't think i don't i think he was joking i don't know if he was joking but then it kind of just hit me and i actually felt fear um this and i think you mentioned in another podcast like the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom i think that's proverbs 9 10 yeah and even to proverbs 1 the the be the fear of the lord is beginning of wisdom and i felt this fear um mm -hmm. and just not necessarily uh there's a reverent fear, like a worshipful, but I actually felt fear. Like, you know, if Jesus does come back, he's judging the righteous and the unrighteous. Mm -hmm. um, those that are not truly in his flock and those that are in his flock. And it kind of put into perception because sometimes it's just talked about all the time. Mm -hmm. What if, and I'm not saying he is, but I'm just saying like when he does come back, like what, what if he did come back? And just letting that sink, like, what if he did come back? And 
am I going with him? It's the question. Am I going with him? And I just, my heart sank and was burdened. And I don't want, I don't want to not be with, I, Mm -hmm. I can't imagine life without him. Yeah. And that just, it was a good reminder. Um, It was a good reminder. Like, you know what, on this journey, on this process of, you know, life, like, I want you, mm-hmm. <laughs> Lord, uh, living or dead. Like, I want to be with you. Um, that was the question that brought me to faith, actually. Really? Yeah. Uh, freshman summer camp, Bass Lake, California. Chris Reiser was the speaker, and he spoke on Revelation at camp. Hmm. And uh, got to the part where all the believers are going to meet Jesus in the sky. You know, hmm. and I asked the question of myself. I don't even think Chris asked this question, but I asked the question of myself, like, "Oh, am am I going to be one of those people? I want to be one of those people." And then I took a quick stock of my life, like. Oh man, I don't, I don't know if I'm really taking this seriously. So I'd known about Jesus my whole life, growing up in a Christian home, mm-hmm. going to church my whole life. So yeah, that that was uh, that's the thing you have to ask yourself, and I think that's, you know, is this the end times? Maybe, maybe not. But you have to look at yourself and be like, "Ooh, am I, am I prepared for it to be the end times?" That's a great, great question. Yeah. I love that question. Yeah. What, whether you are a teenager, whether you're a young adult, whether you're an, an adult, whether you're uh, a husband, wife, or single man, single woman listening to this, um, it's not if Jesus is coming back, it's when and are you prepared. Yeah. Um, and really checking your heart, checking your mind. Uh, man, yeah, that's a great question. Regardless of however, he's coming. Mm-hmm. He's coming in power and authority and glory. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Um, don't be like, uh, there's the parable of the uh, um, 10 virgins for the wedding. And they have their lamps. Do you remember this? No, no. Take me on a journey. Right yeah. Now. So, um, parable. Oh, I just want to look it up. But um, basically, there's uh, in this wedding party, they have their lamps and they're waiting, waiting for the bride to come. And uh, half of them brought enough oil, like they brought extra oil. They were prepared, and the other half didn't, and so their lamps run out. And they're like, oh, shoot, we ran out. So uh, we're, we're going to go back really quick uh, and get some more. Mm-hmm. And while they're gone, the doors open up. And they're like, hey, come on in. The, uh, the wedding is starting. And so the ones who are prepared go inside. And then they close the doors. And then the ones who weren't comp- prepared, they come back. And they're like, let us in, let us in. And the person at the gate's like, I don't know who you guys are. And they aren't let in. And it's just a parable of like being prepared for when the time comes. And you don't know when it's going to come. Yeah. It could happen today for all you know. Yeah. Yeah. Are you prepared? Definitely. Yeah. But. Definitely, man. Yeah. That's some good wisdom. And I, and I think that's what you have to take away from this. Just are you prepared mm-hmm. spiritually? Yeah. For when the time comes. Is it? is it happening soon i don't know jesus said it was soon two thousand years ago Mm -hmm. he definitely has a different view on time than we do Mm -hmm. yeah but i know there's a lot of 
and I, I say this too, I mean, there's a lot of people that you trust and how they speak, mm -hmm. how they model their faith and how they um, step in accordance with the word of God. And, and I think sometimes we might even look at their words as prolific when really, and I think Nick kind of touched on it, uh, the only prolific words that you need to rest your soul and its welfare um, for eternity's sake. And I, when I say eternity, forevermore, that means now. Because Jesus said he would give you life abundant. All right. Regardless of suffering and circumstances, he'll give you life abundant now and forever with him in eternity. If, if you don't uh, rest on the words of Jesus, uh, you're resting on humans that still need Jesus. Mm -hmm. So just kind of resting on God's words during these days is going to bring a, about a joy, a worship, and a deep prayer of, of just of great worth, priceless worth. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to refresh you. That's going to uh, nourish you. And that's going to, man, that's going to be loving on you. Mm -hmm. I hear that phrase a lot. Man, I just want to be loved on. I want to be cared for. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just God's words love. They love deeply. They they love the most inner, darkest rooms and locked closets. And they love and meet you uh, in the scared corners. And they love you uh, in the most open, joyous, running places that you have uh, in the field with the sun shining and... <laughs> Baby cows mooing and baby donkeys. Oh my goodness! Kicking. It's just. Uh, <laughs> it's just a lot of love. It's a lot of love. <laughs> I would say, Nick. And maybe just uh, as this is a podcast. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll we're, talk. We're gonna call this a mini episode. I a, think. a mini episode, yeah. and then you know, mini episode for we, sure. And I mean, you can, you can. We can make this whatever it is, but maybe we'll talk and I'm willing to yeah. stay here and talk about uh, after and make another episode of the fall um, since, yeah. I, since I have time. But we have time. Um, I would say what would be – let's talk about welfare, I guess. Mm -hmm. What would be arresting welfare within this kind of rift of government and um, – and well-being mm -hmm. uh, with with being in relationship with God. So kind of the, that's the question and maybe a Bible verse. Right. How do I how do I follow the government's issue? How am I taking care of my well-being and uh, just focusing on what God wants for my welfare? Maybe some right. maybe a Bible verse oh. resting in that as we end. Oh, I got one. Easy. Sweet, dude. Easy, easy, easy. And I know this one's been used. Um, a lot recently. That's okay. It's been used a lot. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. And but I think it's relevant, and we got to talk about it. If. Uh... Yeah. Okay. So this is Matthew twenty-two. Um. Verse fifteen. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Hmm. Kind of a similar situation to what we're in today. Not taxes-wise, but like, should we be listening to the government or not? That's basically the overarching question but jesus aware of their malice said why do you put me to the test you hypocrites show me a coin for the tax and they brought him a denarius and mm. jesus said to them whose likeness and inscription is this and they said caesar's and he said to them therefore render to caesar the things that are caesar's and the thing and to god the things that are god's and when they heard it they marveled and they left him and went away so that's the verse I would give you when you're trying to figure out what to do. 
um, if the government is asking you to do something that the government in its right has like has the right to ask like hey stay at home we want to keep people safe and it's inconvenient to you you don't like it you don't get to see your friends it's hard um you have to render to caesar what is caesar's mm. now where so basically the question is where's the line and this is what i would say when the government starts to say well now you have to act this certain way um, at home. You're not allowed to do church at home. You know, that's where I would start to say a line has been crossed. Or um, we talked a little bit about this before, but if they say, hey, every single business can open, Every single organization can open except for churches. Mm. That's where I start to say, I, okay, I think a line is starting to be crossed here. Mm. So that's the verse I would use in, you know, just dealing with the, yeah, it's uncomfortable to pay taxes. It's uncomfortable <clears throat> to hear the government say, yeah, hey, you're a senior in high school and now you're not allowed to graduate or go through the graduation ceremony. You're not going to be seeing your friends. Maybe ever again, like if they're going away to college, mm. there's a lot of uncomfortability there. And you have to recognize that the government is doing what it thinks is best for you. And we're lucky to live in a country where that's true. Hmm. But as soon as the government starts to take something that is not theirs and is God's, and I would say your thought process, like if the government starts to control what you think and they have to say, you are not allowed to think this or you're not allowed to believe this, mm. that's where the line is. Mm. I would say it's good man yeah that's what i would say what do you got bill that's good i like your uh i like your uh interpretation of of taking time to really i think just like i think just like uh humbly bow down with god mm -hmm. or bow down to god and and see the things that he set in order and knowing what and, and, and defining what true persecution is, mm -hmm. I guess, even too, rather than it being pride of not letting me do what I want to do whenever I want to do it, however I want to do it, um, because there's a reason why I want to do it. Um, if it's for God, it's going to glorify God. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. I would say that for me, man, and as you just went crazy lit, I'm, I'm trying to to get on your lit level. Um, I kind of flipped to an area in the scripture that is, uh, is something that in regards to this question about the government, honoring the government, honoring how God has made us and our well-being because he loves us, but then knowing this welfare question going into quarantine. Right. I went to Numbers 23, and it's one of the most uh, unfamous books of the Bible because some people say it's boring, but I would actually ask you the to... The book of Numbers is boring? Yeah, that's... Uh, oh, you haven't read it closely enough. Yeah, I, I've got some feedback like, what numbers? Dude, you do your own numbers. Like, yeah. what? No, dude, take some time. Um, and I'm, again, I'm just like reaping some of the things later in life I would that point, I didn't understand earlier. Yeah, I would point just to the people who think Numbers is boring, read the Oracles of Balaam story because not only do you have... Oh, are you... That's literally that's what literally I'm going to talk about. 
<laughs> yes! Oh my gosh, we're there! Even uh, with Okay, I'm not gonna sip. steal your thunder then. Even with um, a sip. No, dude, you can I'm, comment commentate yeah, at right. the end. Uh but we got talking donkeys and we have angels with flaming swords. Come on, tell me that's boring. I, I'm not even gonna get to the flaming swords and the donkeys. I'm getting to Balaam saying to Balak. Um and Balaam and, and correct me, Balaam is the Balaam is uh the the evil king, correct? Is Balak the prophet of God? Uh no. No, Balak uh, uh, Balak is, is the evil. So Balak is the evil king. King. Yeah. And, and Balaam, Balaam is he's like the mystic. Yeah, he's a he's a God is using Balaam. Mm -hmm. And what is what is crazy is, and I'm just going to read this, try to make it simple. Perhaps and and this is this is what uh basically Balaam is telling Balak, "Hey, I'm going to use you to conquer some areas of the world and you're going to say this to the people." Um and we're we're gonna rule but balaam and god using balaam and speaking through balaam um balaam says you know in verse three perhaps the lord will come to meet me and whatever he shows me i will tell you and it says god met balaam mm -hmm. god met balaam and so in this as Balak's like okay go go tell the people tell the people it's time and Balak has evil intentions, evil motivations. And this is what verse 5 says. Uh, Numbers 23, verse 5. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. And he returned to him. And behold, he and all the princes of Moab were standing beside his burnt offering. And this is where Balaam's like, Okay, God spoke to me. I'm going to tell you the truth. And in verse 8, I just want to highlight uh, Balaam basically says the truth and Balak's like, what the heck are you saying? And thinking about this, you're in front of very powerful people. It's like going to your government's area, very powerful people or powerful people you know of uh, that have authority. And Balaam says, how can I curse whom God has not cursed? Mm -hmm. How can I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? If you read this through 25, there's three different messages god keeps bringing to balaam and god is using him and balak's getting mad he's like dude i'm telling you to do this i'm telling you to curse these people tell the god of israel to curse these people and i love this part in uh in numbers 23 and verse 12 where balaam says must i not take care to speak what the lord puts in my mouth must mm -hmm. i not take care to speak what the lord puts in my mouth um and just letting that rest with you, God has put something presently within the world in order for the world to listen. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't want to hear it, mm -hmm. check yourself right now. Even if you don't want to hear it, even if you want to curse God, even if you're in a place right now where you don't believe God is real, even if you don't have a wholehearted hundo percent relationship with God, all right, like Balaam, where God met him and understanding this, God's going to tell you the truth. The true God of heaven will tell you the truth and reveal himself fully to you. Not a distorted view, not a man-made view, not a worldly view, the holy God of the universe. And I think if you truly desire, and this is what gets fear. If you really think about it, that's where fear kind of tr trickles in. If you really want to have a relationship with the holy God of the universe, mm -hmm. you can. Mm -hmm. But that means that your life's going to look different. It's going to look a lot And it's going to change. And we're seeing this, re this, this relationship between a powerful king and tons of princes of Moab who actually worship multiple fake gods, lower G. Mm -hmm. You get me? Yeah. And Balaam's like, listen, this is, this is the real God telling you. You guys are falling 
and you're doing hideous things, horrific things, and he actually is saying turn away. And I, I might die for this. Yeah. But I'm, I can't. And, and I love it. Verse twenty three, verse twelve. Must I not take care to speak what the Lord puts in my mouth? Mm -hmm. Why would I not want to follow the real God of heaven in this time? If he is filling my mouth with the words, why would I risk my life to die if I'm not, if I'm telling you the truth? Well, let me just give a little preface in, in Numbers 25, verse 1 through 3, Israel goes against God and the people, as it says, they begin to whore themselves with mm. the daughters of Moab. They started entertaining the evil things. They started uh, yoking themselves uh, where God said it's forbidden because you're yoking yourselves with people who don't follow me, who don't worship me, who don't have a lifestyle in delight of worship uh, of holiness. Verse two, these, these invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods and the people ate and bowed down to their gods, lower G. Mm -hmm. Israel started bowing themselves. Yeah. And you're like, well, no big deal. No, they bowed, they worshiped, yeah. they gave themselves. And the God of Israel is like, all right, I see this. You obviously have turned away from me. And then verse three, so Israel yoked himself to Baal. And if you hear about Baal, you research Baal. <laughs> Baal is is a fake God, but it, I would say behind it, and you can see in Isaiah, there's demonic influence oh. behind oh, the worship 100%. of Baal, 100%. where they sacrifice kids on the altar and let flames eat their flesh and say, this is worship. 100%. Um, and this is what it says. And the anger of the Lord was kindled yeah. against Israel. I say this to you. For a good I reason. don't want the anger of Israel, or I don't want the anger of God kindled against me. I am Israel. I want to grow um, in trusting God. And so in that, I got on a very passionate move with the government, with your welfare. What is God filling your heart with? And he'll speak. What are the words that are truth that you need to rest on during this time mm -hmm. where things are silenced? What in honoring God ultimately is not going to kindle his anger against you? but is trying to fill you with himself mm -hmm. through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that's my two cents of, of getting a, a, just a taste of numbers. Yeah. Um, it's an exciting book. There are some numbers because right after this, they do a census, which is why it's called the book of numbers is because they do a census. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of exciting stuff that happens. Yeah. So anyways... Uh, yeah, so that's it for our mini episode here, um, which actually ended up being about an hour long, so <laughs> not much of a mini episode, but, um, uh, you know, we're just talking and there's a lot of interesting stuff happening right now. So, um, if you have something that you want us to talk about, um, if you have a question about something in the Bible, if you're like, how do I interpret what's going on in my life right now? Send us an email at the dip and sip podcast.com. We would love to talk about it. We would love to discuss it. And honestly, at the end of the day, we want to encourage you. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus brings is he brings encouragement for those who follow him. And he is, um, you know, the God of the Bible. Um, he is a God who could be understood. Mm -hmm. uh, he makes sense. Uh, there's logic there. And uh, we want to encourage you in that. So thanks for listening. And we will um, we will catch you on the flippity flop. Dude, I literally was just going to say flippity flop. Are you so serious? That's, that's, that's great. It's the mind wave. <laughs> <laughs> Carry me to the fountain. <laughs> All right. Catch you guys later. Bye.